I'm Jason Benham. My name is David. Our business is named after me. That business is the Benham Companies. It's a multi-million dollar real estate empire founded by twin brothers David and Jason Benham. In 2014, the twins made headlines when they were hired then fired by HGTV because of their stance against same-sex marriage and abortion. Today, the Benhams encourage Christians to stand in the gap for their faith and others and explain why we need to be that vital connection between people and God in their book, Bold and Broken. Well, Jason and David are here, and welcome to the show. Thanks We've got for a new book us. out, Bold and Broken, Becoming the Bridge Between Heaven and Earth. All right, so Jason, I'm going to start with you. <laughs> this book came out of a conversation with a molecular biologist? <laughs> Actually, no, but no? that is a great <laughs> chapter in the book that talks about that cell adhesion molecule inside of our bodies called laminin. Mm -hmm. And when you look at that, I mean, it literally gels together cells and it keeps them connected to our muscle tissue. And the, 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 the pattern of that molecule is in the shape of a cross. And so I didn't have the conversation. It was something I got from Louis Giglio. But man, mm -hmm. that is phenomenal how the cross brought the connection. Okay. And so that's the, the bridge. That's right. It's the adhesion that holds everything together. Yeah. And so as I, I was up early one morning praying thinking about Ezekiel 22, you know, where God said, I'm looking for a man to stand in the gap. And I prayed through the Lord's prayer. And then I got to the part where it says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I thought about that gap. And then I thought, you know, in today's cultural context, the importance of Christians standing boldly for their faith to stand in that gap, it takes boldness. But we wrote the book to show Christians through story that there are ditches on both sides of that road. Boldness apart from brokenness makes you a bully. We've, we've found some folks that, are, that have been there, and, and we've been in that, in, the, in that ditch as well. But on the other side, and this is where a lot of Christians find themselves, is that brokenness apart from boldness makes you a bystander. So the ditch on either side of the road is that you can be a bully on one or a bystander on the other. What David and I say in this book is that your boldness needs to be fueled by your brokenness. And when you do that, you will discover you become a bridge between heaven and earth, and you actually become the answer to the prayer that we pray, your kingdom come um, your will be done on earth as you it is. You become that cross. You become you that. Take bridge. up that cross. Yeah, continue the connection. Up. All right, Dave, we're going to let you talk now. Okay, no, don't let you. him. No, finally. <laughs> he we're talks all the time. Finally. Finally. Good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, let, let's get into one of the stories. Right after you got bounced off TV, yeah. you got a, a message from yeah. someone that was just yeah. scathing. We had hundreds of thousands of messages coming to us, and especially on Facebook and the Messenger. and. And for some reason, I know it was just the Holy Spirit. I remember I, I popped open my cell phone. We had probably been fired three or four days. And, and uh, I just saw this one message. And it was from a young man in Chicago. And he said things about Jason and me I never even knew existed. I mean, it was just horrible things. And, and the Holy Spirit really just softened my heart for him. Instead of trying to win a mm. point, you want to win a person. And so I just simply said, bro, I think you're speaking through your pain. Well, the next message he sent to me was almost like a book. I mean, I, I just read and just all that he just poured out his life story and the abuse and these things and my heart really broke for him. So that started a conversation over about a two day period of time. And I found out during that conversation that he's a huge Chicago Cubs fan. So I reached out to Jason. I said, hey, man, let's put him on the front row. The cards are about to be in town. Let's send him a little. Let's go on a stub hub, buy some tickets, send him a link and put him right on the front row. And so we did that. And he was blown away. He couldn't believe. He's like, I can't believe you guys are doing this for me. Well, a couple did, of days did later. the Cubs win? Uh, you know, I don't remember. <laughs> you know, I should know that. It's so I mean, bad. The cards they played town. the Cardinals, no, cards they probably didn't I'm sure win. if they were playing the Cards, they lost. <laughs> well, a couple of days later after the game, he uh, responded back to me, and he, and he sent me a, an email. And, and in it was a link to a Mercy Me song, I can only imagine. And he said, hmm. for the last two days... He said, after you guys sent me those tickets, I have been listening to this song over and over again, and I am so overwhelmed by God's love that I've chosen, he said this, to surrender my life to the Lord and walk away from the lifestyle I've been living. And it was just amazing. Now, it doesn't always work that way, but you know, God wants to connect people. But when it does work That's that right, way. That's right. It's amazing. God wants to connect yeah. with people yeah. because everybody's broken. Everybody needs a touch from the Lord. And, and so oftentimes, if we're Looking at the culture around us, we as believers want to engage boldly, and we do need to engage boldly, but it cannot come apart from brokenness that really wants to touch people with compassion in the love of Jesus Christ. 
Why is it so hard to get there? You know, it, I, I will say sure. I felt like a lesser Christian. If, if, yeah, I had I, gotten, yeah. if I had gotten a message like that, I don't know if I would have done anything. Yeah, well, you, you, we look at Scripture, and, and this is 28 chapters filled with stories, so it's very practical. And, and we talk about several Scriptures, and the one uh, case study is the life of Peter. And you see what happened with Peter in the garden when he was asleep. And he was awakened to the captors that were coming for Christ. What did he reach for? A sword. sword. Yeah. yeah. So that's what happens with us. And when he takes that dude's ear off, Jesus instantly says, no. We're, look, your response cannot be to harm people, not to hurt, but to heal. So we have to, as believers, our first, as we're waking up and realizing, oh my goodness, look at this spiritual battle that's waging in this nation. New York City expanding their abortion laws. I mean, we're redefining marriage and redefining gender. and People are gripped by an identity of their feelings and passions. And man, we really need to speak the truth in love, but we can't awaken to this and reach for a sword and hurt people. No, we want to bring healing. And so that's Peter the bully. But then on the other side, just a few verses later, you see... Peter, now Jesus is walking to the cross and he's following him at a distance. He's beginning to distance himself now. And then a young girl says, hey, I know you were with him. And three times he denies the Lord. That's mm -hmm. Peter, the bystander. But then in the book of Acts, after the Holy Spirit comes, all of a sudden Peter arises to his feet and speaks boldly with a heart of compassion and has been broken and boom. That's now the rest is history. God used him as a bridge. All right, Jason, back to you. I'll give you a bridge <laughs> from what David was saying. We just are, are seeing what I never thought I would see in my life, where you have legislation that says a child can be born alive and it's still okay to kill that child. How, how, how do you reach that? Well, that's the culture of death. You know, and, and we see that the gates of hell will never prevail against the church. This is the moment where the church should stand and be the leading voice that says, look, all life is sacred from conception all the way through to death. All life is sacred. And so on st stuff like this that's happening, what we see is the, the ceiling always becomes the floor. There was a time where they said, you know, we just want abortion up to six months. And now all of a sudden we see what's happening. But that's why it takes bold believers to actually stand up and say, no, wait a second. God is the one who creates life, defines life. And we have a responsibility to protect all human life. We need to start talking about it. That's number one, is that we just be willing to actually enter the conversation. If we get there, we'll, we'll be surprised at what God does. Okay. <laughs> it's got me. It's got me mad. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. That's a righteous indignation. It's, That's a... it's like you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. Uh, what have we come to? And it's gotten me looking at some Old Testament judgments that sure. happened when Israel started sacrificing their children. You know, one of the things that we did is is uh, we were asked to speak at the Day of Mourning at the Capitol in Albany. Um, in New York, and we, we actually had a moment of mourning. This was a time where we shouldn't be rejoicing over these things. We should, you know, because these legislators well, in standing, New York standing were... Standing ovation for Yeah, them. and then you and then light up the building. And then they got a blessing over it. Yeah, no. So we have to, as the church, we are the salt and the light. We are the ones that have to respond to that. So we went to the day of mourning. But from that position of mourning, we now need to lead to action because it's one thing to be against abortion. It's another thing to be pro-life. There are mothers that are out there that feel an overwhelming majority of them, they feel that abortion is their only choice. Yeah, and we're like, no, 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 no. There's no, no option no, no. for me. There are a myriad of options for you, but the church can't be like the priest and Levite in Luke 10 walking by on the other side of the ditch. The, you know, they're, they're over there on the other side of the road. They might have preached a great sermon or prayed a great prayer about the man in the ditch, or maybe one day a, a, mu a year held up sanctity of man in the ditch Sunday. You know, while, <laughs> while I go to those marches, it's vital that we get down into the ditch and really help our neighbors. But this is where spiritual leaders need to take the lead. You see, Gordon, we're at a, hu we're at a huge problem you know, in our culture when our spiritual leaders, their income, their influence, and their image is all tied to people liking them. When you're there, we're in big trouble. We need for our spiritual leaders and, and all of us to individually to actually lay those things on the altar and realize that any platform that we have, that's not just meant for you to stand on. It's meant for you to lay on as an altar and let it burn. 
let it burn, that we're willing to stand and say, no, all human life is sacred. Look, God defines marriage. We can't redefine marriage. And we start talking like that. What we'll discover is a lot of us will lose our platforms. So be it. But we'll stand for the truth and let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit does. And that's to set people free. Yeah. You're speaking from example. You did that. Mm -hmm. You absolutely did that. And let's let's just pray in agreement that we can have a culture where every mother wants their children. Yes. Yes. And wouldn't that be a great yes. thing? Yes. Amen. And let's incentivize that. That's right. Let's praise mothers. Let's congratulate them mm-hmm. because it's a, it's, a, it's a risk on there. You're, you're actually saying there's hope for the future. That's right. There's hope for my, my children and let's give them that hope. Yes. Amen. Amen. The Amen. book is called Bold and Broken, Becoming the Bridge Between Heaven and Earth. It's available wherever books are sold. And Dave and Jason, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thank you.